For these walls to be David's palace, it would have to date to his lifetime, around 1000 BC. The problem is stone walls can never be dated on their own. Biblical archaeologists date ruins based on the pottery they find associated with those ruins. Pottery dating is based on two ideas. Pottery styles evolve uniformly over time. And the further down you dig, the further back in time you go. If pottery style A comes from the lowest stratum, then it is earlier than pottery style B that comes from the stratum above it. By analyzing pottery from well-stratified sites, excavators are able to create what they call a relative chronology. But this chronology is floating in time without any fixed dates. To anchor this chronology, William Foxwell Albright, considered the father of biblical archaeology, used events mentioned in both the Bible and Egyptian and Mesopotamian texts to assign dates to pottery styles. Albright's chronology, slightly modified, is what Mazar uses to date her massive building, and what most archaeologists use today. What we found is a typical 10th century pottery, meaning bowls with hand burnish. You can see from inside, together with an import, a beautiful black on red juglet. What is so important that this is a 10th century typical juglet. So has Mazar discovered the Palace of David? She adds up the evidence. The building is huge. It is located in a prominent place in the oldest part of Jerusalem. And the pottery, according to Albright's chronology, dates to the 10th century BC, the time of David. Mazar believes she has indeed found the Palace of David. But that evidence, and indeed the kingdom itself, rest on the dates associated with fragments of pottery. And some critics argue the system for dating that pottery relies too heavily on the Bible. Archaeologists in the past did not rely too heavily on the Bible. They relied only on the Bible. We have a problem in dating. How do you date in archaeology? You need an anchor from outside. Today, there is a more scientific method to anchor pottery to firm dates. Radiocarbon dating. It is a specialty of Elisabetta Boreto of the Weizmann Institute. The first step is, of course, in the field, which relates the sample, the material like uh, olive pits uh, or seeds uh, or charcoal to the archaeological context. If an olive seed is found at the same layer as a piece of pottery, the carbon in the seed can be used to date the pottery. When the seed dies, its radioactive carbon-14 decays at a consistent rate over time. By measuring the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12, Boreto can determine the age of the olive seed, which in turn can be used to date the pottery. Boreto has meticulously collected and analyzed hundreds of samples from over 20 sites throughout Israel. Her carbon samples date the pottery that Albright and most archaeologists associate with the time of David and Solomon to around 75 years later.
for events so long ago, this may seem like a trivial difference. But if Barreto is right, the Tsar's Palace of David and Papi's ancient Hebrew alphabet have to be redated. This places them in the time of the lesser known kings Omri, Ahab, and his despised wife Jezebel, all worshippers of the Canaanite god Baal. With no writing or monumental building, suddenly the kingdom of David and Solomon is far less glorious than the Bible describes. So David and Solomon did not rule over a big territory. It was um, a small chiefdom, if you wish, with just a few settlements, uh, very poor, the population was limited, there was no manpower for big conquests and so on and so forth. This would make David a petty warlord ruling over a chiefdom and his royal capital Jerusalem nothing more than a cow town. These are the results of the radiocarbon dating. He or she who decide to ignore these results, I treat them as if arguing that the world is flat, that the earth is flat and I cannot argue anymore. But it's not so simple. Other teams collected radiocarbon samples following the same meticulous methodology. According to their results, the Tsar's palace and Tappy's alphabet can date to the 10th century, the time of David and Solomon. How can this discrepancy be explained? The problem is that these radiocarbon dates have a margin of error of plus or minus 30 years about the difference between the two sides. Pottery and radiocarbon dating alone cannot determine if the kingdom of David and Solomon was as large and prosperous as described in the Bible. Fortunately, the Bible offers clues of other places to dig for evidence of this kingdom. The Bible credits David with conquering the kingdom. But it is Solomon, his son, who is the great builder. This was the purpose of the forced labor which Solomon imposed. It was to build the house of Yahweh and the wall of Jerusalem, Hatzor, Megiddo, and Gezer. 1 Kings 9.15 Here in Hatsor, Amnon Ben Tor, director of excavations, believes this may be evidence of Solomon's building campaign. Archaeologists call it a six chambered gate, a massive entryway fortified with towers and guardrooms. Ben Tor's predecessor, Yigal Yadin, first uncovered this structure. It turned out to be a six chambered gate. And uh, Yadin immediately remembered that a very, very similar gate was excavated at Gezer. And then Chicago University excavated this gate here at Megiddo. Stunned by the similarity of these three gates, Yadin recalled the passage in the Bible. Here we have a wonderful connection of the biblical passage as it shows up in archaeology. Three monumental gates, all based on the same plan, would seem to be powerful evidence not only of prosperity, but also of a central authority. Throughout its history, the Israelites had been divided into tribes, then into kingdoms, north and south. The locations of these strikingly similar gates in both regions suggest a single governing authority throughout the land. But how can we be sure this is the kingdom of David and Solomon? The 
answer once again lies in Egypt. The heads fighting scene which you see on this wall commemorates a military campaign conducted by Pharaoh Shishak or Sheshonk, the founder of Dynasty 22 in Egypt. The Egyptian Pharaoh Shishak invades Israel, an event the Bible reports and specifically dates to five years after Solomon's death, during the reign of his son Rehoboam. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, King Sheshak of Egypt marched against Jerusalem and carried off the treasures of the house of Yahweh and the treasures of the royal palace. He carried off everything. 1 Kings 14, 25 and 26. The importance of this in fixing one of the earliest dates, specific dates, in which Egyptian history coincides with biblical history is, is really startling and, and has to be taken note of. This stunning convergence between the Bible and Egyptian history gives a firm date for the death of Solomon. Shishak's campaign, according to the well-established Egyptian chronology, dates to 925 BC. And the Bible says Solomon dies five years earlier, which means 930 BC. This is further evidence that David and Solomon lived in the 10th century. But there's even more hidden in these walls. These ovals, with their depictions of bound captives in city walls, represent places Pharaoh Shishak conquered in Israel. One of those places is Gezer, where archaeologists find the hallmark of Solomon's building program, a six-chambered gate. Phil Deaver directed the excavations in the late 1960s. We can actually see vivid evidence here of a destruction. Down below, we have the original stones pretty much in situ. But if you look in here, you see the stones are badly cracked. You can even see where they're burned from the heat of a huge fire that has been built here. And then up in here, you see the fire has been so intense that the soft limestone has melted into lime and it flows down like lava. This is vivid evidence of a destruction. And we would connect that with this well-known raid of Pharaoh Shishak. And if the gate was destroyed by Shishak in 925 BC, then it must have been built during the lifetime of Solomon, who died just five years earlier. Surely this kind of monumental architecture is evidence of state formation. And if it's in the 10th century, then Solomon. Although a minority of archeologists continue to disagree, this convergence of the Bible Egyptian chronology and Solomon's gates is powerful evidence that a great kingdom existed at the time of David and Solomon spanning all of Israel north and south with its capital in Jerusalem.